Jimmy and Bill. We talked about with Jimmy Colorado. On the Feast of Christmas, on the third Mass of Christmas, Jimmy and Bill. In the Epistle, for the third Mass, the day Mass of Christmas, it's taken from St. Paul's out of the Hebrews, chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, last of all in these days, has spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir to of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the figure of his substance, and upholding all things by the word of his power, making purgation of sins, sit at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath inherited a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels hath he said at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. <clears throat> and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten in the world, <clears throat> he saith, And that all the angels of God adore him. And to the angels indeed he saith, He that maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of justice is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved justice and hated iniquity. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou in the beginning, O Lord, didst found the earth, and the works of thy hands are in the heavens. They shall perish, but thou shalt continue. And they shall all grow old as a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the self same, and thy years shall not fail. Then the Gospel, taking that according to St. John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. And without Him was made nothing that has but that was, has been made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of, dark, of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to give testimony of the light, that all men might believe through Him. He was not Himself the light, but was to give testimony of the light. Thou was the true light that enlighteneth every man that cometh into the world, into this world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, to them that believe in his name, who are not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us, and we saw his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Those are the words of today's holy gospel. And Father, the Holy Ghost, amen. So in this third Mass of Christmas, the day Mass, which you guys are having in the nighttime, the third Mass of Christmas, we consider that the only light is God, and that Jesus Christ is God. And remember that he who was born in the cave 2,000 years ago is God. And that's why it's very significant when modern man speaks about Jesus Christ, especially modern politicians and modern people. They speak of him as what Christians believe and so on. And President Trump in his Christmas uh, address a few weeks ago or some days ago, in his Christmas address to the nation, he said that Jesus Christ is God. <clears throat> Not that Christians say that he is, that he is. They said, we thank you, God, for sending your only Son to redeem us. And when you consider the situation in the world today, the, that, that this is a very significant thing. And what Jesus Christ is not interested of what men say we are, what he wouldn't say he is. 
But what is he really? And whom do we say that he is? Remember when he blessed Simon, the son of John. He said to him, Who do men say that I am? Well, and who do men say that the Son of Man is? Some Elias, some John the Baptist, some one of the prophets. Whom do you say that I am? I am who am. Whom do you say that I am? And therefore, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Simon the son of John stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when Simon the fisherman, who was very wise when he first met Jesus Christ, he was very wise, because when he made a great catch of fish, he realized that this great catch of fish was not because of himself, but only because of the power of God working in Jesus Christ, whom he did not yet know was God. But he knew he was of God. And therefore the wise Simon said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. These are the worst words, the first words that the great Simon said. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. He recognized that he was a sinful man. He recognized Jesus Christ was a good man and man of God. He recognized that by God, fish came into his boat. And our Lord said to him, Simon, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. And now is the time when we must fish men. It is necessary to fish men. The church is made of fishers of men, layers of traps, casters of nets, to gather the souls of the world to come to our Holy Mother the Church. But who is in that church? Who created that church? I am who I am. So when Simon spoke of himself, he spoke wisely, and he said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. But then, a little bit later, a year and a half later, what happened? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Whom do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what thou art. That's who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art Christ. Not men say thou art Christ. And hence we pray that we note that the angels in heaven will note that the President of the United States said a few days ago the truth about Jesus Christ. That he is God. That he is the Son of God. That God, we thank God for sending his only Son to this earth to redeem us. And we are waiting for that redemption to come again. And that redemption shall come. It shall come. But who redeems? God. St. Thomas Aquinas points out, Jesus Christ, in his humanity, he's a real man. He's as human and as manly as I am. And as man, he cannot perform a single miracle. Jesus Christ, in his humanity, cannot say, Arise and walk. Jesus Christ in his humanity cannot say, Thy sins are forgiven thee, and make it happen. He is not that power in his humanity. He is a real man. But there is divinity suffused throughout his humanity. So that his real human nature is so connected to the divine nature that he is only one person. And it is not the man that says, Arise and walk. It's the person that says it. Is the person. And the person says, Arise and walk, because the person is God. He has a human nature which has no power to say these things. He has a divine nature which has the power to say whatever it will. We are to remember that this baby that was born in Bethlehem, he is God. St. John wrote the last of the four Gospels around the year 100 AD when he was an old man. And as he sat down to write that Gospel, who am I writing about? What am I writing about? Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, who performed many miracles, who is our Redeemer. Therefore, he began his gospel. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, how does he begin his gospel? He's writing about Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning is the Word, and the Word is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him. And without Him was made nothing that has been made. Imagine St. John when he wrote these words 2,000 years ago. I am writing a book, the Holy Gospel of St. John. I'm writing about a man who lived 33 years upon this earth. Who is he? The beginning. The Word. Who created all things. Who is God. And he made all things. And without him was made nothing that has been made. He made every hair upon my head. He made every atom and molecule. Who is this child that's in the, in the cave of Bethlehem? Who is this child visited by the three kings? Who is he that's hated by King Herod? Who is he that's fought against by Satan? Who is he that's loved by his disciples? Who is he that the average man doesn't care about? God. And God is God. He is the Word. And why is it there's light? Because the Word spoke and said, Fiat lux, and there was light, and light was made, and there is light because the Word spoke. And God is in all things, sustaining all things. And this God decided in his second person to become man. All things were made through him without a method that made. In him was life, and the life of the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. The light shines in the darkness. There was a man who was from God, St. John, who prepared the way. To John was not himself the light, but he could test one of the light. But he, Jesus Christ, is the true light that enlighteneth, enlighteneth every man that comes into the world. In other words, Jesus Christ gives light to every man to be able to save his soul. He will give light even to the Antichrist. That the Antichrist, if he responds, would become a saint, but he will reject he will give light to everyone that comes into the world, that he might be able to save his soul. But the majority of souls in the world do not want the light, and they do not accept the light, and they do not comprehend the light, and they live in the darkness, but the light shines in the darkness. Imagine the spirit of that great beloved apostle. He is called the beloved apostle, but remember as a young man, he is called the son of thunder. St. John is the son of thunder. He was a man of power. He was a man of greatness. When he sat down to write his book, the holiest of the four Gospels, though every one of them is the Word of God, he said, this is the book about the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it, but the light still shines before every man, because every man is going to get a sufficient grace to be able to save his soul. Every man is going to get enough light, and only those who reject the light are going to be damned. This child, this God, chose to show himself as a child. We were reminded of this third Mass of Christmas. This child is God. He is the Word. He is the Creator. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. He is God, and all other gods are devils. But then what does he say, St. John, as he continues his holy book, which is not for some men, but for all men. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, repeating what he had said earlier, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, to the Jews, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, to them that believe in his name, who were not born of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of God, nor the will of man, but of God. Every member of the Church of Jesus Christ, the Holy Roman Catholic Church, is born of God, not born of men. That is why a priest is called Father. I am called Father. A father is children, but these children are not the children of the flesh. They are children of baptism. They are children of the confirmation. They are the children of the priesthood. They are the children of all seven sacraments. They are the children of those who receive the light of faith and embrace the faith. These children are all of them born of God. And God wants there to be men who can be rightly called the sons of God, and they cannot be called the sons of God unless they are born of God. And how are we born of God? By the sacrament of faith called baptism, by the reception of faith. And then by living by that faith, we remain in light, and the light destroys the darkness. So in all the troubles going on right now, it is the light alone that can destroy the darkness, and this light will destroy it. He gave the power to become the sons of God, and then believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. 
And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we saw his glory, the glory as it were, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We are the seers of his glory. That's what we're supposed to do in life. Open up our eyes and see the glory of God. See that Jesus Christ is God. See that there are no other gods. See that every word that proceeded from his mouth is true. And there is no way to come to truth except by and through him. There's no other way. And so we see the truth. We love the truth. And, our, and as the seers of the truth, we fulfill our purpose as rational beings, as men. So let us see the truth. Love it and stand by it always. Our God is God. And that child born in the stable is God. That man who died on the cross is God. The one who was laid in the tomb is God. The one that rose from the dead is God. The one that says in the Holy Mass, this is my body, he speaks as God. Jesus Christ is inside the Blessed Sacrament as God. And he is God and man in the Blessed Sacrament. But especially his divinity is what we wish to receive. And let us receive that divinity and let it live inside of us so we can, we can be truly called as St. John asks, the sons of God. But only those who receive that light have the power to become the sons of God. And this is the answer to all the troubles of the world today. Let's stand firm in our holy faith. Thank God for this great day of Christmas when God became visible to our eyes, when he began to walk us in flesh, when the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And he wants to still dwell amongst us. That's why he comes to us in Holy Communion, why he comes to us in Baptism, that he can still dwell among us. Let us make sure that Jesus Christ and God the Son dwells amongst us and continues to dwell amongst us until the ending of our times when we go to the judgment and we'll be seen. The Father shall say, Do I see my Son in you? Is my Son dwelling inside of you? Is the Holy Ghost inside of you? Do we have our mansion inside of you? Then come to heaven, beloved my Father. But if our mansion is not inside of you, depart from me, curse of everlasting fire. Let's make sure the light is in us. Let's keep that light boldly in us. And that's Holy Mother to pour that light into us, keep that light inside of us. God bless you all, and we wish you a happy Holy Christmas. God bless you all, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.